We are now on week six for lesson one. We are going to be able to identify our controlled vowels in multisyllabic words, words with more than one syllable. So reminder, that's A-R, O-R, E-R, I-R, and U-R. Let's practice first combining some familiar syllable types. So in this first word, we have target, tar, and get. Tar is an R controlled sound because of the AR, and get is a closed syllable with a short E. Those can combine together to create that word target. The next word is hardware. So we're going to look at both of those, each syllable, hard and where. And we're going to remember from what we talked about last time that in hard, we have the R sound, the AR. But in where, that A takes on the long A sound with the silent E. And so in this case, the VCE is stronger than the R. And then we have a word like this. This will make the word remark. So we're going to talk about how to create that word remark. We have re is our first syllable, and mark is our second syllable. The syllable re is an open syllable because there's a long E at the end of the syllable. And the word mark has that AR, R controlled sound. So it's an R controlled sound syllable. Let's look at a few more on this page. So we have short stop is the word made by taking it into pieces, short stop. Notice in short, we have that OR, R controlled and can combine with stop, which is a closed syllable, short O to make short stop. The word party is made by dividing it up into party. Par is the R controlled AR. T is open syllable. If you said that, you got it. Remember the Y makes that long sound of E in this word. The next word is garlic. So we're going to take garlic and we're going to be breaking it into gar and lick. Let's go ahead and look at each of those. In this case, gar is an R controlled. Lick is a closed syllable with a short I. And our last one we're going to look at is B4. And this one's important and we're going to talk about it because remember, for B we have the open syllable with the long E. But for the word for, even though this E is at the end and it's not making a sound, with an O we still focus on the OR sound and it's an R controlled instead. So the next thing we're going to talk about is how we can accent syllables on words because a lot of times when you say a multisyllabic word, you're going to say one part of the word a little bit more forcefully than you say the other part. And that forceful part of the word is what we call the accented syllable. So we're going to start with these words and talk about them quickly first. The first word I have on here is the word army. And I want you to say that word to yourself and decide which part of the word you say just a little bit louder. Is it R or me? Army. When I say it, I generally back off of the MY. So because of that, the accented syllable is that AR, army. In the next word, we have radar. I want you to decide in this word with the open syllable and the R controlled syllable, which one is the accented syllable? Radar. In this case, again, you're looking at a first syllable that is more forceful than the second. In bombard, you have a little bit of a different sound. This is a closed syllable, and this syllable is an R controlled syllable. So in this case, when I say bombard, this syllable is the louder of the two. So the second syllable is the accented syllable. Let's look at a few more. In the word deport, port is the accented syllable. So I can look at this as being an open syllable. Port is an R controlled syllable and port is the louder of the two. It's the more accented syllable. In the word darling, Dar is the accented syllable. It is R controlled. Ling is a closed syllable. 
So in this case, the accent syllable is the first syllable. In this word, you have mem or eyes. So you actually have three syllables you're looking at. In this case, if I say this word, I'm looking at a closed syllable, an R controlled syllable, and I'm looking at a VCE syllable. And when I say this word, I say memorize. So in this case, mem is the accented syllable of the three, the first syllable. When we look at the next three, we have porcupine, we have embargo, and we have partnership. So we're going to decide how we say those and what the accented syllable is. When I say this word, oops, when I say this word, porcupine, I have the R controlled sound first, followed by an open sound, followed by a VCE. And when I say porcupine, that first syllable is accented. When I say embargo, I've now accented the middle syllable, embargo, which is my R-controlled syllable. Open syllable for go, M is a closed syllable. So in this case, the second syllable is accented. In partnership, I accent part, partnership. Notice again, I have three syllables, partnership. In the word foster, I start with foss, accent that, and I don't accent the T-E-R, foster. Lastly, in the word sarcastic, notice that the middle syllable is what is said with an accent, sarcastic. I say it a little bit more forcefully, and it's a three-syllable word. There are also many multisyllabic words that have more than one R-controlled vowel within them. The first one that we're going to look at is this word, border. Notice that if I break this up, it's two syllables, border, and both of them are R-controlled. I have or and er. The next one I'm going to look at is perform. Again, I have two R-controlled syllables. I have er and I have or. The last one I'm going to look at is kindergarten. Notice in this one, I have kindergarten. This is a four syllable word, and two of these syllables have the er sound in them. We talked before about the spelling option to go with R controlled words that say er. And we're going to go over that really quickly and just look at our options as we're doing some words. So let's first start with this one. And remember, if my sound is er, that's what I'm looking to add in here. So I want to make the word shirk. In order to do that, I'm going to practice with a couple sounds. I'm going to see what looks correct. So if my letter combinations do not look correct, I'm going to try other ones until it does look correct. In this case, I'm going to be looking for IR. Let's look at a couple more. Blur. I might know it, I might not, but I'm going to try a couple first to see what looks correct until I can determine what should go into the box. In this case, it's going to be UR. For flirt, flirt, I might know right away what I want to use. I might have to test them out. In this word, spurn, I might try a few out to see what's going to look best. I, R, maybe, no. Then I might try something else like U, R, and find that it looks correct. The word stern, I can try different letters until I come up with my ER. And in termite, I might already know what I need, but it's something that we can use as a tool to try and kind of practice with. For these, each one comes at the end, and I want you to notice what's the same about each for hunger, temper, and enter. Most words with the ER ending are going to end looking like this. Notice that each of them have the ER at the end, not IR or UR. 
typically you're going to have ER as your ending when it's added on to the end of a word. Our high frequency words for this lesson are the following and we're going to remember spell them using our finger on our surface and then we're going to come up with a sentence to go with them. The first word is other. The spelling is O-T-H-E-R. O-T-H-E-R. I want you to come up with a sentence for the word other. Your sentence might be related to something you did the other day. Your next word we're going to look at is the word another, like I want to go another time. For this word, it's very close to other. You just have the an added first, so let's spell this together. A-N-O-T-H-E-R. A-N-O-T-H-E-R. I want you to go ahead and come up with a sentence that uses the word another. The next word is the word earth. The word earth is interesting because it makes the er sound, but we actually have ea at the beginning instead. So we're going to spell this together. It's e-a-r-t-h. Use your surface to spell with your finger. e-a-r-t-h. Go ahead and come up with a sentence that uses the word earth. And your last word is the word answer, like to answer the question. We're going to spell it together. Use your surface to write out the word. A-N-S-W-E-R. A-N-S-W-E-R. Go ahead and come up with a sentence to use with the word answer. So we have two demonstration words that we are going to talk about today, and we're going to break them down into their pieces and mark them. We have partnership, and in this word we have an R-controlled syllable first with part. In ner, we also have an R-controlled syllable. And for ship, we have a closed syllable with a short vowel sound. In formulate, we again have an R controlled to start off with our OR sound, followed by an open syllable with MU for MU. And then we have LATE. And LATE is our last syllable, and it's a VCE syllable. The A is long, and the E is not heard. Let's go ahead, and we're going to look at the meaning, and we're going to look at a sentence to go with each. So for partnership, the definition is two or more people or organizations working together. An example sentence would be the two golfers formed a partnership to win the contest. See if you can come up with a sentence to go with the word partnership. For the word formulate, the definition is to think carefully about something and make a plan. A sentence to go with that would be, I will formulate a plan to get a good grade. See if you can come up with a sentence to go with the word formulate. Lastly, let's review our learning from today. Today we applied our controlled vowels to multisyllabic words. We evaluated words to determine where they are accented. We worked with the spelling option procedure for er. And we were introduced to new high frequency and demonstration words.
We are on week six, lesson two, and in this lesson we will be able to apply suffixes to multisyllabic words and we will be able to evaluate more words based on the one 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 doubling rule. Let's start with a reminder on accenting words and how we go about accenting words. So let's start with the word glory and look at that together. When you hear the word glory, you accent the first syllable. So I'm going to mark that as a first syllable accent. In the word intern, again, we mark in as being the accented syllable that we hear a little bit more loudly than turn, intern. In the word expert, we again hear X a little louder than pert. Let's look at a few more together. In the word prefer, I'm going to actually hear the second syllable a little louder. So I'm going to mark the F-E-R as being the accented syllable. In plaster, I hear plas a little louder than ter. So plaster, plas is the accented syllable, the first syllable. In the word number, num is the accented syllable. It's a little bit more forceful than bur, number. And in these words, you have transfer, transfer. So I have trans is a little louder than fur, transfer. In the word forbid, bid is a little bit more accented, forbid. And in the word slender, slen is a little bit more accented than der. This is going to be important coming up when we talk about the 111 words for multisyllabic words using the R controlled syllable. So it's really important to be able to work through accenting these syllables and thinking about which syllable is the more forceful of the two or three syllables. We are going to do some practice remembering how we work to add suffixes to multisyllabic words. So let's start with the word memorize. And remember in this word, if I mark it as memorize, I have three syllables. The first one is closed. The second is R controlled. And the third is VCE, the long I, and the E is silent. Remember, when I add a vowel suffix to a word like memorize, I'm going to need to take the E off in order to add the ending. So in this case, I'm going to make the word memorizing. In order to do that, I'm going to start to write memorize but I am going to leave off the E at the end and add ING, memorizing. For the next word, I'm going to look at this one and notice that I've left a block open. That's because this is the word confirm. And remember we talked about before how with ER we need to decide which ER is correct. In this case, I want you to look and see by writing on your page what is going to look the best. If I write ER, it would look like this. If I write UR, it would look like this. If I write IR, it would look like this. In this case, the IR is going to be the best letters to use. It looks correct. So I'm going to turn the word from confirm to confirmed with an ED ending. Next, let's look at the word intern. If I take intern and turn it into interning, I notice that there's an RN at the end. It is not going to be a word where I need to do any doubling or anything like that. It's also multisyllabic. In turn, I have a closed syllable at the beginning. I have an R controlled syllable in the second syllable of the word. So in this case, I'm going to write in turn and then add ing to the end. For my last word, it's the word that was one of our um, demonstration words previously, we have the word formulate. For this one, OR is an R controlled syllable, MU is an open syllable with a long U, and LATE 
is a VCE syllable. And remember we talked before up above in Memorize about how with a VCE syllable, if we add a vowel suffix, we are going to need to get rid of that E. So for formulating, like I am formulating a plan, I'm going to write formulate up until the E, and I'm going to leave that off to add ING. We're going to take a moment to review 111 words and what they are. Remember, when we're talking about 111 words, we're talking about words that have one vowel with one consonant following them, and they are only one syllable within the word. So if we start with fib and lash, which of these are 111 words? You should have said fib. In the word lash, sh comes after the a, so that's two consonants, not one. We're going to look at the following words, and I want you to determine which ones are going to be 111 words and which ones are not, and we're going to work through them. Notice in turn, you have an rn following that e, that's two consonants. Turn is not a 111 word. How about tur with the ER? It is a 111 word. Nate, notice, has an A and an E. It is not a 111 word with two vowels. The next word, gar, has an AR at the end. It has one vowel and it's one syllable. It would be a 111 syllable. And mit has an I and a T after it. It's only one syllable, so it is a 111 word or syllable. We are now in part two of our 111 syllable rule. And so this is where we're going to take what we've learned about 111 syllables and that rule, and we're going to apply that doubling rule to multisyllabic words where it can apply. So we're going to look at some words together. The words we're looking at are forget, consult, silver, admit, and we're actually going to look at a few others as we go. What I want you to notice is that for the multisyllabic word to follow the 111 rule, it must have a final 111 syllable, and the final syllable must be the accented syllable. If both of these things are true, then the final consonant will be doubled. So we're going to be looking to see if our words that we're talking about have both of these things, a final 111 syllable and that the final syllable is the accented syllable, which is why it's so important for us to be able to determine which syllable is an, the accented syllable as we work. So we're going to start talking about the 111 final syllable rule and then go from there because that's what we're most familiar with. So let's look at the final syllable and determine if it's 111. So let's look at get. Is get a 111 word? It is. It has one vowel followed by one consonant. Let's look at salt. If you said no, you are correct. The vowel there is the U, but it's followed by an LT, which is two consonants, so that does not work. So we can go ahead and get rid of that word for our next slide. How about ver? Yes, you have one vowel followed by a consonant, and this is actually an ER syllable, so it makes the ER sound that we've been talking about. For the next one, mit. Is it a 111 syllable? Yes, it has one vowel followed by one consonant. Again, the one below it is also mit. And how about ter? And we talked about this one earlier. The ER does follow the one vowel with one consonant following it, so it is a 111 syllable. Now we're going to look at some words together in order to determine which ones have an accented final syllable. So we're going to look at our remaining words. The first one is the word forget. Forget. Which syllable is accented when I say forget? I notice it to be the final syllable being accented. So in this case, the word is 
for get. I am going to have to double it. It has the one, one, one syllable at the end, and that is the accident syllable. Therefore, if I write a word like forgetting, I will need to double my T's. In the word silver, although this is a 111 syllable, the sil is what's accented. So if I talk about something being silvery, I will not add an extra R. In the word admit, mit is my 111 syllable. I already determined that. Now when I say the word admit, I notice that mit is my accented syllable. So in this one, just like forget, in admitting or admitted, I will need to add an extra T. Here are two more. Just as before, submit, I'm going to have an accent in mit at the end, so my word would be submitting, like submitting my paper. I will need to add an extra T because of the accented syllable and the 111 final syllable. In the word banter, ban is my accented syllable. So in this case, my accented syllable is the first syllable, so I will not have an accented final syllable. In this case, if I talk about bantering, I will not add an extra R to that word. In this case, silver is not one that I'll follow the doubling, and banter is not one to follow the doubling. So let's practice by talking about the 111 doubling rule just a little bit more. So the first thing we need to decide is, do I double the words? Do I double the letters? And we need to decide on whether or not each of these words has 111 syllable at the end. And I have included ones that all have 111 syllables. Der, fur, ver, bid, and fur. Now the next step is talking about that accented syllable. So as I say the syllable, I want you to think about what I say. And I want you to give a thumbs up if the second syllable is accented or the last syllable of the word is accented, and I want you to do a thumbs down if it is not. The first word is ponder, ponder. You should have your thumb down. That is not going to be a second syllable accent. It's a first syllable accent. The next word is refer, refer. Is the first or second syllable accented? If it is the second, thumbs up. If it's not, thumbs down. For the word refer, you should have your thumb up. The next is the word discover. Discover. In the word discover, which syllable is accented? Is it the last one? If your thumb is down, you are correct. In the word discover, it is not the last syllable that is accented. The next word is forbid. I forbid you to go. Which syllable is accented? If it's the last one, put your thumb up. It is the last syllable in the word forbid that is accented. The last word we have is prefer. I prefer you to go here. Notice that fur is the accented syllable in this one. So we now have our list of non-crossed off words that are the syllables that we will be doubling the letter. Refer, forbid, prefer. So when we go to do the rest of our word, we're going to look at the last consonant, and we are going to double it, which means that in the word refer, we will need to double the R. In the word forbid, we will double the D. In the word prefer, we will double the R. Remember, this is only when we add a vowel consonant, just as always with the 111 rule.
So here are our words. Notice I added the ing to both ponder and discover, even though we've crossed them out, so you can see them without adding the extra consonant. They do not have an extra r attached to them. In the word referring, you can see my extra r added on before I put ing. In the word forbidden, in which I've added the en vowel consonant, I've added the d. And in the word preferred, where I add an ed, I've added an additional r. Our high frequency words for this week are as follows. We're going to talk about each one. The first one is mother. I want you to spell that with me and come up with a sentence to go with it. Mother is M-O-T-H-E-R. M-O-T-H-E-R. Go ahead and come up with a sentence for the word mother. The next word is the word father. I'm going to have you spell this with me using your surface, and then I want you to come up with a sentence to go with the word father. F-A-T-H-E-R. F-A-T-H-E-R. Go ahead and come up with a sentence to go with the word father. The third word is work. I'm going to have you spell it using your surface. W-O-R-K. W-O-R-K. And come up with a sentence for the word work. And last, we're going to have the word water. Spell this on your surface as I spell it out loud. W-A-T-E-R. W-A-T-E-R. Go ahead and come up with a sentence to go with the word water. Let's go over marking and discussing a few demonstration words. The first demonstration word we're going to talk about is the word observing. Notice that in this case, ing is our ending that's been added on. It's a suffix. Observe would be a word by itself. It's a base word. It's also had the e taken off in order to make it a um, word with the vowel suffix added on. So I'm going to write observe below it. So in this case, ob would be a closed syllable and serve would be an r controlled syllable. And ing would be the suffix on the end. The word below is permitting. Again, we have the ing suffix on the end that I'm going to circle. I'm also going to mark per and mit because the word permit by itself is a word. It's a base word. We have the er sound in the first syllable. And that's the r controlled sound. You'll then notice that for mit, we have a closed syllable. But it's also a 1-1-1 one, one, one syllable, and remember how we talked about in a word like permit, where mit is the accented syllable, and it's a closed syllable at the end. We will have to add a bonus doubling letter to go with permit to make permitting. So notice I've added that T. For these words, the first one observing is noticing details about something you see. The sentence to go with it would be, after observing the clouds, I am expecting a storm. Go ahead and come up with a sentence to go with observing for yourself. The next word permitting, the definition would be allowing something to exist or to happen. A sentence to go with that would be, my boss is permitting me to miss work for your wedding. Go ahead and come up with a sentence you would use for the word permitting.
we're going to do a quick review of what was learned in these slides. The first one is that we did a review of some of the previous skills that we have done. We added suffixes to multisyllabic words that are, are controlled. What's really important is that we are applying the 111 rule to some multisyllabic words, specifically ones where the last syllable is a 111 syllable and it's an accented syllable in the word. We also introduced new high frequency and demonstration words.